You were right to shine the spotlight on the fact that those kids are minorities. Because you're all minorities. You're in the Glee Club. You like comic books and punk music and hate swearing? Oppressed. You like maths? Oppressed. You think Asian kids are stupid? Oppressed. If that sounds insane to you. Welcome to the world of Eleanor and Park, aka White Savior Complex, the novel. So, Eleanor and Park is a YA novel written by Rainbow Rowell in 2012, and it was insanely popular in the 2010s. This was a time of John Green, The Hunger Games, and just copy and paste, female protagonist, YA fiction galore, all of, all of that, all of that. And it was where, for many of us, representation was far more likely found in a book than it would ever be on TV or film. So you can imagine the sheer amount of excitement that surrounded this book. A major release featuring an Asian American, specifically Korean American, and an incredibly complex female and main character as well. Us here in the Asian diaspora were getting hyped over this, but... <laughs> Maybe you've caught on to a potential issue. That's Miss Rainbow. Rainbow Rowell. That is her real name. And this is our K Korean American MC. This book is getting a movie adaptation and that announcement was made in 2019, but it's been back on everyone's radar because Rainbow Rowell tweeted about the director being chosen and casting had started. Needless to say, everyone was kind of shocked that this was still going through because the Asian American community has been complaining. Not complaining, complaining seems dismissive. They've been rightfully criticizing the racist portrayals of this book for eight years. It's been out for eight years. <sighs> I feel like we've come far enough in 2020 to sustain conversations about race. We may not be happy about it, but at least sustain them without losing its footing in like a few days. Or I hope so. God. So I'm making this video to again bring those conversations back up. I've linked a lot of better in-depth story analysis analyses below from Asian Americans that I think everyone should read if you've heard of this book. Or if you read it, didn't recognize a lot of the layers of racism. I think you should definitely read a lot of people's reviews and account. What I want to focus on less than the story is the exact effect of racist portrayals like that and in general the disservice white authors often end up doing when they take it on themselves to write through minority perspectives, specifically people of color perspectives, without doing the due diligence of any proper research. <sighs> My bitterness towards this book runs deep. And that's largely because of Miss Rowell herself. I wish I knew what she was going for when she wrote this. My thoughts and feelings have changed quite a bit since I first read this book in 2013, 2014. When I first read it, I didn't recognize a lot of the layers of racism. At first, all I had were complaints about, and they are complaints because it was just me. <laughs> Not being like other girls and finding complex female characters a bit annoying. Although having like grown up and my criticism having matured a little bit, I do see a lot of issues with Eleanor's characters. None of which I'm going to go through because I'm not a book to you. Probably, probably for the best. There are also parts of her that just aren't well written. She's kind of rude. She's complex and rude, especially to Park. Oh my god, this girl will get into it. I get it, this book is set in the 80s in a largely white community in Nebraska, which is also Raoul's home. And Raoul's deriving a lot of this from her own experience, which I think is really good in a lot of ways. It really enriches the town. Like, I like her writing style. I genuinely do. I think it's perfect for YA fiction. It's simple, but it's nuanced, it's heavy in the right places comedic in others. I also think she's been quite a necessary voice in the YA fiction community for writing about teenagers and their experiences in really like how do I say it? a lot of adults write YA in a sort of condescending way almost that's why you get those weird MCs who are 
not like other girls who shit on all of the teenagers even though that's not necessarily what teenagers are like but what would they know they don't ask any of us i also think she's been a really important novelist in the way that she again creates complex characters park although racist like i've said 50 times it's also really sweet and sensitive and again nuanced nuanced baby in a way that i guess not that many teenage boys would probably get to see themselves portrayed as which is really nice eleanor doesn't look like your typical ya female leads i copy paste supermodel even though she's i don't know fucking 14 carry on another work by her features a really sweet queer romance and so on and she has been important for a lot of people and in researching for this i read a lot of articles in which people were really grateful for her characters i've linked to however i don't think that means we can't ask for better especially when her writing is affecting a lot of young people when you attempt to document a minority group's experience for profit because let's face it when you're publishing a book selling it in stores it is for profit when you do that you do your research out of decency and out of accuracy it enriches the story my immersion was completely ruined by the fact that this book didn't feel like a realistic portrayal of the asian american experience this book failed us on so many ways it was neither the representation we wanted nor the representation we deserved because honestly sometimes no representation is better than bad representation especially when you have very few other sources of representation to balance things out when you have a bad portrayal of a female character nowadays at least you have slightly more nuanced portrayals of female characters to balance it out the general public isn't just fed this one narrow trope anymore you have a little more scope a little more diversity of the complex female character in universal canon however but when there are so few examples of Asian Americans, biracial Asian Americans, for representation, it becomes the standard. And it's a bad standard. And I want to explore the choice of this representation because to this day, I don't know what makes white authors think they're doing us some sort of favor by writing our stories, especially when they do it so poorly and with no effort at actually portraying the authentic experience. Like it comes with this pretense of changing the world or being a hero, writing stories that no one else writes and you being the one to do it. And then especially when it comes with a tragic and misunderstood martyrdom, when people of that minority group rightfully criticize their their own portrayal in your work like let's make this clear she's writing about what she thinks we experience not what she knows we experience it's a narrative built on how she thinks we feel and how she thinks we live our lives and the thing about lived experiences right is that everyone's lived experiences are different i'm sure a lot of people saw themselves in park and saw moments of this book that mirrored their own experiences in their childhood but just as many people found themselves vilified by his portrayal and insulted and hurt before i go too much into my criticism i do want to give Ralph some credit in her nuanced approach to park as i mentioned before he's kind he's sensitive and i think this comes from Ralph's self-proclaimed love for men let me explain <laughs> she said that I believe really strongly that men are good, Rao says. There are men who want love and who care and are sensitive to the same degree as women, just differently. <laughs> okay. I hope when girls read this novel, they believe that there are guys like Park out there. Everybody, Rao ended sexism. Thank you, queen. Like, I feel like that statement just killed the thing I liked the most about this book. The intention was for females to have a better perception of men instead of for men to have a better perception and portrayal of themselves. Fun. I think you should form your own opinion, like if you're interested in doing so, form your own opinion solely from the book itself before going into the film. Because again, when I first read this book, I did not pick up on a lot of the racism because that's the thing about racism in this book. It's so layered that often unless you have the lived experiences that are being described in the book it's not that easy to notice the portrayal like that's why asian americans have been the most vocal about this because they have the lived experiences that allow them to immediately observe these harmful portrayals of their lives 
and is also why when you go on goodreads or Ralph's twitter you'll just see people waxing poetic about this book and getting so excited over this film and more often than not those are people who are white you know it's true people just don't have the lived experiences to then obtain the skills to be able to tell apart racism when it's so layered but that's also why we should be more vocal about it and continue to amplify the asian americans who've been speaking about this since day one that's what happens with a lot of these works right you're caught up in this beautiful love story like eleanor and park is an homage to romeo and juliet there are these two kids who are outcasts to society and all they know is the love they found within each other and it's beautiful for so many ways because again of the emotions tied into eleanor's difficult life at home and park's struggles with himself all of that immersion was again completely ruined because his struggles were so poorly portrayed when you're not aware of that poor portrayal and you're not aware that it is a poor portrayal you just get lost in the love story and that's all you see and people have been bringing this up to Raoul herself for years years and years and years on every single one of her tweet there's always a response saying okay cool have you addressed the racism yet blah 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 in fact there's even one instance where <laughs> Where someone literally calls out the racism, another person replies in response saying, Oh, I need to go buy the book. And then Raoul just says, Hey, I can send you the book if you want. Completely ignoring the initial tweet about the racism. Like, you, you can't make this shit up. Hi, oh my goodness. Okay, this is... I recorded this video like three weeks ago. I'm just was terrified of posting it. But all of this happened about two, three days ago for me recording this right now. Upon which... There's a thread on Twitter documenting a lot of the times Rainbow Rowell has been restricting accounts on her Instagram when they ask her to address racism. The first tweet in the thread is referencing the tweet I just linked. But then beyond that, there's a further look into... Wait, what the fuck am I saying? Okay, Miss Ava, thank you so much. It says, all right, buckle up y'all, it's thread time. Rainbow Rowell has been restricting accounts that comment on her Instagram posts asking her to address the racism in Eleanor and Park. We all knew she was ignoring it, but now she's actively silencing people in her comments. So this started with this thread where someone who seems to know Rainbow asked her to address the issues, not going to explain them because they've been explained over and over again. In response to a well-known tweet about it, she tagged someone else who presumably also knows them and that conversation ensued. My interpretation of it was it seems like she was trying to make her seem like her book isn't bad when faced with someone she may know slash respect calling her out. Then I checked back a few days later and she had deleted it. And in response, Ava tweeted, What? Are you just going to ignore the comments on its racism? The original post is calling you out and the conversation is asking you to address it. Please address the harm your book has caused. I don't know how you can even interact with um yeah <laughs> flash forward and i'm commenting on one of her instagram posts about the issue some people like my comment and someone even dms me about it they've clearly been interacted and then avis i'm just gonna paraphrase because this is getting crazy and i'll link the thread in the description below avis friend comments and also gets restricted while rainbow roll is actively replying to other people and some of the comments were also getting deleted not just restricted specifically one saying please address the racism and stop silencing people in the comments and then proof that it's gone and Ava concludes with saying I know a lot of us loved your books hell I was obsessed but this is ridiculous and wrong maybe we should just let this die because it's obvious you'll never address it or try to fix anything but I'm still here trying or at least I have been until you fucking restricted me we love you rainbow and yeah it's just disappointing because it's evident how aware she is of all this criticism and instead of i don't know trying to make things right or even explain herself she just goes and does this instead blocking fans and people who, who are still showing her all this kindness despite her clearly not regarding them the same way and that's all i have to say about that and okay so now let's dive into some of Raoul's attempts at sugarcoating the racism there's a blog post she made in 2013 which has since been deleted i used a way back then way way back way back machine to go to around 2016 2018 something like that to find the post in all of its glory and oh my god there is a lot to unpack here let's take a highlight reel 
One, so she just saw him as Korean. No more intention behind it. He was just pictured as that in her head. Okay, cool. If that was the intention from the get go, then do some research. Get a Korean American editor or sensitivity reader, fellow writer. There were many at the time to vet your writing and offer their perspective and then compensate them for helping you profit off of their experiences. You know? Do the decent thing. I'm not gonna go write about what I think a Chinese immigrant in Australia will be experiencing because I don't know. I'm not gonna write about the experiences of a black woman in London because, again, I don't know, even if they're from my hometown. I'm not gonna write about someone's life and story that I don't understand when, when that story shapes so much of their life because it does. Park is shaped so much by his background. Which is realistic. I know I'm shaped so much by my own ethnic background, but then it's not done the due diligence of being actually representative or helpful or enriching the story in any way, shape, or form. Maybe as an outsider, you think, oh wow, look at the way this is being portrayed. It's so brilliant. It's so groundbreaking. Oh, Park is such a more enriched and sensitive character because of it. But then when you actually have any familiarity to the culture of roles supposed to be portraying, it feels so disingenuous and like a slap in your face. Okay, let's look at her second point. Two. Oh, it was actually because of a Korean woman her father fell in love with when he was stationed in Korea. Huh. A woman who Raul fantasized about being her father's soulmate, whom he would have maybe brought home. Ah yes, the classic tale of an American soldier bringing home an Asian woman, rescuing her from her own country, and bringing them to a better country. Cheers, Rainbow. Not racist at all. Really wanted to hear your take on that situation. And three, why is Park Korean? Because I think there should be more Asian American characters in YA, especially boys and also more chubby girls. Because it's up to people like me who write them. Wait, let's do that again. Because it's up to people like me to write them. I mean, to the first part, you're not wrong. To the second part, no. <laughs> No, it is not, Raoul. It is not for people like me, like you, this white woman, to write Asian American characters, play with their heads and their narratives and stories. Before this gets taken in the wrong way, I would love for it to be more normalized for people of color to exist in stories written by anyone, not just those specific people of color. I'm not saying only Asian Americans should write Asian Americans, but it's not up to you, Raoul. You're not our savior. You could have had a sensitivity reader. This could have been co-written. There could have been due diligence done, especially when representation for Asian Americans is so sparse. Bad representation becomes an umbrella representation and it becomes the only mirror we have with which to see ourselves. Like it or not, media shapes you. It influences how you see yourself, how you see other people, other communities. Media teaches you sometimes how to deal with your own emotions, how to treat the people around you. All this book showed Asian Americans was it's okay to hate yourself and nothing about how to grow from that. Let's delve into some of the specifics of this book. This conversation, as I said, has already been tired over the last eight years, largely by many of the ignored Asian American writers and critics. Their works will be linked below because again, a lot of them face so much backlash, both from the reading community online, offline, and for those Asian American writers who spoke up from the industry themselves, from their colleagues. Let's do another highlights reel of this book. First, we have to talk about Park's name. For anyone who doesn't know, Park is a Korean surname. For a non-Korean character, it would be a perfectly sensible, well, it would be an okay first name, but not for a Korean character. Rose says on her frequently asked questions on her website, my backstory for Park's name was that Park is his mother's family name, surname, and that his parents thought it would be nice for him to have both their names, Park and Sheridan. This is fairly common in American families to use the mother's maiden name as the kid's first or middle name. It's a tradition in my family. Hear that? My family. I was also thinking about how in lots of families, the oldest kid has a more unusual name, 
like rainbow. And then the parents decide to play it safer with younger kids. My brother is literally named Jerry. This is what I mean. This is just so incredibly hollow and unrealistic. It just doesn't happen in real life. For Asians and perhaps other cultures, but I'm speaking from what I'm familiar with, a last name is powerful. For us Indians, it often ties us to our religion and heritage, sometimes even so far as to be geographical. My last name ties me to a particular town in India. It indicates our heritage and upbringing, for better or for worse, but that is its purpose. It would never be used by a first name by Indians. And this is, again, similar for people from China, Japan, Korea. <laughs> My friends have also expressed their confusion and disdain by hearing a Korean American being given the first name by the writer as Park. It's just silly. There are no Michael Scott or Lily James in Asian culture. And for Koreans, in the past, maybe not so much now, last names were almost numbered. They would tie you to a long line of the original Park or the original Kim fam. So just to ignore all of that, which honestly could be found from just a quick conversation with an Asian American author, like maybe not from a quick Google search, but again, that's why I'm saying it would have been just sensible, just decent to include someone from this culture in your writing process. Even if as an immigrant family you don't place any weight or recognize these ties anymore, which happens, it's not, it's like, I'm not saying it's a ridiculous scenario, this does genuinely happen. And that's completely to the individual family or whatever, but if you wanted to portray Park's family as that, it still sounds stupid. You just don't do it because it's not convention. It's like it's like calling a child book or table. I know it happens, but I know it happened. But the rest of us still see it as stupid. We still clown on it. Puck's gonna get clowned by subtle Asian traits for the rest of his life. Similarly, Rowald states that Puck's mother, Min Tae, which FYI, not a Korean name. It's not a real Korean name. Believe it or not, Asian names aren't just random sounds smushed together. So Ro says she changed her name to Mindy for assimilation and Parks was done as a way to keep him tied to his own heritage. Which I don't know if Park was coming from a family that was clearly thinking about assimilation and culture. Realistically, they would have given him a better name. There are Korean names that also function as familiar English names. Like they can be romanized quite well and quite easily. For example, J, J from J6, J, J Hyung. K pop was popular in 2012. All she had to do was a quick Google search. Again, Roel just shows us that she's writing her own story be using Park as a vessel. A vessel with a pretty little diverse Asian bow. It may just seem like a name to a lot of people, but at its core it's just disrespectful, half-assed, and just shows that even in a story with an Asian character and narrative at its core, Asians still don't really matter. Reading this book, Korean Americans were just shown another way in which their culture was used in, as an aesthetic to explore makeup wearing, sensitive and feminine park without, importantly without, because I'm not trying to criminalize those things, but these things were explored in park without any nuance of actual lived experience and struggle. It's just using the surface level stereotypes and showing to Korean Americans, this story is not for you. It's a packaged minority experience for the majority and not coming from the minority themselves. As I mentioned before, this book is set in the 80s and because of that, a lot of people have said the racism in this book is excusable because it's in the 80s, it's in a predominantly white community and the characters are just kids who are easily influenced by the society around them and yes, that's true, but I think they're still missing the point. The issue isn't so much that Park's classmates call him Chinese or that Eleanor calls him that stupid Asian kid about four or five times. It's that these things are never addressed. Internalized racism is a very real, most omnipresent demon that follows us throughout our entire lives. It affects the way we see ourselves and affects the way we function in our relationships with other people. Park experiences so much racial abuse throughout this film. He falls in love with Eleanor, who is one of the people that's been hurling this abuse at him the most. And yes, she is 
just a child in an ignorant community with an awful home situation and no better role models to follow but he goes through all of this racially targeted bullying and harassment and he just internalizes it all constantly and then that's it Eleanor constantly waxes poetic about his honey colored skin and almond flavored eyes the exotic features of him. He's treated like food. The age-old perception of people of color, especially Asians, being this palatable type of minority. One of the biggest takeaways then from this book is that Park suffers through so much that he just wants to be white or look white. He wishes he looked European like his father and brother like a real macho man as Raoul asserts. Yes, this is a real struggle for many people in the Asian community, especially when you're growing up in white countries and neighborhoods. We detest ourselves for being the other. And so when you then choose to take on our stories and tackle this, please give us the due diligence of resolving this for the character. In real life, no story is just tied up neatly with a bow. I acknowledge that I don't expect the same to happen for Park, but the people in the story are constantly hurling abuse at Asian Americans at large and insinuating that Asian Americans aren't real men, that they're not attractive, and no one ever faces consequence for their actions or learns anything. If anything, Park just learns how to better absorb and internalize all of this. And as for the reader, whom Ms. Eleanor pointed out Raul clearly doesn't care about, it just affirms to them how you are perceived by the outside world as the other, as the exotic thing, more so than a human. You will never fully belong in the space, even in a space that was supposed to be for you. It normalizes the hate and abuse experience, and normalizes being the one spewing it. It sympathizes with the racist characters, saying, oh, they don't know any better. But then you know better, Raoul. You wrote this in 2012. We as a society know and deserve better. None of the characters experience any learning or growth. Eleanor doesn't eventually find the Asian parts of him attractive. In reality, she finds him attractive despite being Asian, as if being an Asian man is the worst thing he could be in this type of society, which for him, it probably is. But then, then what's the story? What's the moral of the story? If that's the conclusion your main character goes through, what, what are you trying to tell us, Rainbow? Eleanor even equates the racism Park experiences to what she experiences from having red hair. You know, to make racism more accessible and explain why it's bad to the general reader. Honestly, I've just hit the tip of the iceberg on a lot of the issues about this book, but that's because so many other better writers and critics, specifically East Asian critics, I've been saying this for years and I will link their pieces below for better understanding to amplify their voices instead of speaking over them entirely. And a lot of them reference their own perspective and the specific amount of hurt narratives like this have put on themselves. And in general, the sheer amount of pain that butchering an Asian character like this has caused because there is a right way to go about this. I'm not saying she shouldn't have tackled this at all. Just saying that since she did decide to tackle it from the get-go, she should have done it better with some decency one of my friends a biracial korean like park and i'm only referencing this to explain why exactly i'm referencing her story um commented to me about how disappointed she was in the lack of exploration of park's feelings she related to me that as a biracial korean she feels a lot of insecurity about visually being the other about not being white but about not being korean and how that makes her feel in trying to inhabit any of these spaces in the book, there's no commentary about this at all, experiences which have shaped the lives of many biracial Asians. There's no commentary about Park's feelings about not being able to fit in or any awareness from the narrative about his emotions or feelings in that moment. No commentary about how difficult it is to visually embody these struggles and have it so open for everyone to just see you as the other. I just want to say to white authors or non-queer authors and writers in general, you can never write us because you don't know us. You don't know our lived experiences and never will. It doesn't matter if you're married to one of us, best friends or have some other 
communicative, information relaying type of relationship, you're not us. You will not know us. And this is largely because a lot of us don't know ourselves. As I mentioned, racism, discrimination, bigotry, queerphobia, and so on manifest in so many complex ways, which many of us are still unpacking ourselves to this day. The damage society has done to us and the damage that we've in turn done to ourselves from internalizing all of these ideas is something that is so critical to our narrative and our story and our voice. But it's something you can't articulate from the outside. You're not doing us a favor by misrepresenting us. And I know what you're thinking. People of color are always crying out to be represented by Hollywood. How are writers and producers going to get more people of color in media when you keep complaining? Well, that highlights the problem perfectly. Hire more people of color and queer writers and producers behind the screen. Put us in those rooms. You can cry about never finding experienced people of color, but no one even gives us a chance to get any of that experience. We may not be in the exact suites yet, but you can be damn sure we're coming and we're so hungry, so starved for representation that we won't let anything stop us. God, I think another reason my business runs so deep is that I actually bought this paperback and I don't buy books. I don't want to donate this because I live in Asia and I'm so scared that another kid is going to see this and have the misfortune of internalizing all of this. This cesspool. And I also don't want it to end up in a landfill. If anyone knows how to compost a book, a hardback, hardcover book, let me know. I know I've come off as quite a hateful person. Let me give it a swatch. Do you see that? Do you see that? Nothing. That's the amount of substance this book has. But I'm just sad and disheartened that this issue still persists and that it's getting a movie. She's getting more money, more opportunity from writing a diverse story about an Asian American that she butchered. And despite all the criticism and backlash, she's progressing more and more, profiting off of our experiences when there are so many Asian American authors writing more nuanced stories about their struggles and their discrimination and experiences that don't get nearly the same limelight. It's just affirming even in 2020, our stories are only profitable when they're coming from a white voice. And oh, it'll probably get a sequel and be champion for diversity and win some fucking award, I don't know. She'll be praised for breaking boundaries, stepping into uncharted territories when there were so many Asians already doing this work before her, but better. I just want to conclude this video with a quote from one of my favorite South Asian authors, Arundhati Roy. There is no such thing as the voiceless. There are only the deliberately silenced or the preferably unheard. It's authors for role who take on the battle of diversity for themselves that keep the voices of people of color unheard. I'm not insinuating any consciously malicious intent on Rowell's part to make that clear, just that her behaviors and the way that industry has championed her perpetuate a broken cycle. I am criminalizing the execs who from a quick Google search could see articles upon articles criticizing this novel and the portrayal. But no, <laughs> guess we expected too much for people. I think I've said all that I have to say about this. Let me know. Let me know your thoughts below if there is a thought watching this. Let me know if you're a thought. <laughs> I'm also going to put a list of YA books by Korean American authors, which you should read instead, even though I know I told you to read Eleanor and Park before watching the movie, but fuck that, read these books instead. Okay, thanks, bye!